This is how I built my rental portfolio starting in 2017 or 2016, I can't really remember, to now. Uh, this is the exact strategy that I used and it's worked out pretty well for me so far. I want to say every investor is different. You're not, not everyone's going to want to do this. Not everyone's going to have the time to do this. Um, but I, when I did it, I had a full-time job and did this as well. But the basic strategy is the Burr method. And this is something I found online and in a bigger pockets forum. And I just thought, man, this is, this is the way to go. So the simple premise is you buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. The key terms you're gonna to have to know are the ARV after repair value and the LTV loan to value. This is what the bank is gonna give you when they appraise the property. Simple way, you buy a house. The formula is the same for everything and it doesn't matter the dollar amount. It's just, you can do it on any scale. You just have to know this right here. After you fix it up, what is it gonna be worth? The way to do that is to look at sold homes. Um, you can ask any realtor really and say, you know, what's this home gonna be worth if it's all nice and fixed up, right? The old adage is location, 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 where you buy the worst house on the best block. This is the exact strategy people use for that. So let's just say you buy a house for $40,000. If you buy a fixer upper house, the bank is really gonna wanna see that 20% down. You're gonna be very hard pressed to, to find something else. You get those three and a half, five percent 5% FHA loans. Those have different rules and guidelines that you have to go by and it's a lot harder to close. If you buy something that needs any sort of rehab, it's gonna be a little tougher, but it can be done if you have good enough income. And you have to live in it too, that's the, with those FHA ones. But if you're just buying a house through the local bank, you're gonna to have to put around 20% down. So that 20% of $40,000, I take your $40,000 times 0.20, that 20% down is 8,000 bucks. Subtract your 8,000, you're left with a mortgage of $32,000. And now you as the investor need to know, okay, what do I need to do to this property to bring it up? And you know, usually it's always floors, paint, something like that, maybe one or two kind of more capital expenditures, I call them like a roof, siding, you know, your plumbing, stuff like that, the bigger expensive stuff. You might have one or two of those here and there, but you really don't want to pile those on in any one given property if you can help it. Let's say you're going to do all that stuff. Nowadays, I mean, you're going to be spending around $10,000 to do something like that. Every place is different, obviously, but let's just go with $10,000. I did all the work myself, but if you hire it out, you got to account for those costs as well, for sure. I did it. Let's say we spend 10,000 bucks, okay? Now we're all in at $42,000. So we bought it, we rehabbed it, now we gotta rent it out. If you fix a property, you buy a property somewhere in this price range, like I did back in 2017, 2018, I was getting around 600, 650 a month on these properties. So my mortgage is still around that because when you buy it, I had to buy it a 15 year amortization. So that led to a higher payment. So usually I was paying around that 240 mark, somewhere in there at the lower interest rate, around that three to 4%. And so I would cover all my costs, right? Of your maintenance, your taxes, your insurance, stuff like that. I could still cover it. So now you're left with the $42,000 and you've rented it out. Now the bank, now you go to the bank and you say, hey, I want to get this property reappraised and I want a new mortgage on it. So this one, this new mortgage, I found, and it took me a long time to get a bank to do this. I could get a 30 year fixed rate on a rental property. And I got those around the 3% mark, almost all of them. And so the bank would come 
and they'd reappraise it. And a lot of times it looked like this. So you'd be around that $60,000 mark. So this is your appraisal. You got this thing for appraisal at $60,000. And you're all in at $42,000. So the bank, here's where this loan to value comes in. They still want to see that 20% loan to value. Or I guess I should say 80% loan to value on any given property, especially a rental property. So you take that $60,000 that the appraiser says this property is worth and then, you know, go back to those sold. They're going to look at sold properties in the last six months around your same square footage, you know, around the same kind of finishes, things like that. And so you take your 60,000 times your 80% loan to value. And you're left with $48,000. Take your $48,000 and you subtract your all-in cost of $42,000. Now you're left with $6,000. The bank at closing is going to write you a check for that $6,000. Now you're going to have closing costs at, at this, especially with this type of loan. It's going to be... A couple grand in closing. Let's just say it's two. So after all that work, you got a rental property that cash flows and makes money every month, builds appreciation. Your tenants are paying down your mortgage on it, and the bank writes you a check for four thousand dollars. Now you got this rental for four thousand dollars. You go back and you try to do it again. Maybe you save up some more and try to do this again. Maybe I've heard of some banks that will do, if they know you well enough and know how you operate, they can do all this on the front end. So they'll give you what it takes to buy the property, what it takes to rehab it, all up front. I've never done that, but there's people that definitely have done that and it works for them. It's a way not to bring as much capital up front so it could be a good way, you know, not a ton of people know about that, but it's definitely a way you could buy real estate. So some investors call it an infinite return. If you have no money back in your original investment, I think that's called an infinite return. I guess I'm not 100% sure, but that's just the way I've done it. And I've done it about six or seven times. Uh, they are not all like this. Some are better, some are worse, but if you can come out of it with getting your money back and stuff, you're doing you're doing really good. So, this is the whole strategy on how I did it. And if you want to know more, there's way smarter people than than me that know and go into more detail about it. But this is just the quick and dirty on how I did it.